This is an NVMe enclosure that was sent to me from Yoda Master. I've done, I think, two reviews for Yoda Master so far on USB-C hubs uh, that basically had an NVMe built in, NVMe slot built into them, and they were actually fantastic, both of them. They asked me if I wanted to review this, and this is a USB 4, you can see there, 40 gigabit per second enclosure, and of course I said yes, because for one thing, it looks like it's from the Terminator movie, if you've seen Terminator 2. Secondly, it's a USB 4 enclosure, which are obviously very useful. I use USB 4 devices, I do video editing on them, and so it's fantastic. I'm always gonna say yes to uh, USB 4 enclosures. So far, so good from these guys. Everything they've sent me has been quite good, um, which is nice. I like when I get stuff that is good. Um, so you get a multi-style connector here. Let's open this up. So you get uh, USB-C to USB-A. Now, when you use USB-A, it's not gonna be as fast. I don't think USB-A can go above 10 gigabit per second. That's fine because some people have legacy ports, but then you can pop off this cap here and you get 40 gigabits on both. So when I test it, I'm gonna be doing it like this to be getting max speed. I will test it with this because I mean, I want to, uh, but we'll only be getting about 10 gigabit per second speeds out of that, which would be about a thousand megabytes a second transfers. We'll pop that off and we'll pop that in like that. That's how it should be. Comes with a heat sink. A uh, tray, uh, nice little thing there. Good packaging. All metal, so this is going to work as a heatsink. Just the existence of this frame is going to work as a heatsink. You want it to be metal. You want it to take the heat away from the SSD inside. Uh, some kind of probably a light in there, most likely. You get your 40 gigabit markings, bottom, and then your Terminator 2 style. Uh, chip there, so I wonder if Arnold Schwarzenegger's artificial intelligence is on here. It's possible. Okay, and there's the actual logic board there. Um, so I guess you put your chip in like that, and that'll work, or on top, sorry, and that'll work as a heatsink. Oh, I knew there was a heatsink in there. So underneath the instructions, there's, underneath the box there, there's instructions. And then we get two more screws in case we lose those, because I do actually lose them, so we'll keep that. And then we get our thermal pad. We'll take some heat away over time. No direct contact, but that's fine. So this should be able to, in theory, push this device here to its absolute max, in theory. Okay, so let's see what kind of speeds we get here on a USB 4 device. Alrighty, nice and straightforward. I love these kind of videos. As you can see here, it's nice and fast. 3,500 megabytes a second read for our peaks there. Uh, you know, it's gonna go down from there. 2,400 for writes. That's actually slightly faster. I've, I've tested recently a number of USB 4 enclosures, NVMe enclosures, and they typically get the good writes there, the 3,500, but a lot of them are slower. They're still fast, but they're closer to 2,000 megabytes a second in terms of writes. You can go out and buy your standard uh, five gigabit per second or whatever, so you're gonna you'll get around 500 megabytes a second. 10 gigabit ones are relatively common, I guess. You'll get about 1,000 megabytes a second or so. That's okay. Uh, but why leave your NVMe bandwidth on the on the table? I mean, you're getting very, very, you put in one of these devices here, especially if you get yourself a Gen 3 drive. I have a Gen 4 in here, but you can just pick yourself up a Gen 3 drive. This thing will be able to max it out. It'll go as fast as my drive is actually capable of doing. Okay, so it's been transferring and it's working as anticipated. Let's pause that there. Primarily what I wanna show here is the temperatures. So we can see here, uh, it's not getting that hot, 60 degrees. I've been writing for, I guess, 15 minutes or so, at yeah, 14. Um, you know, it could potentially, you know, get hotter or whatever. Feeling this here, it doesn't feel too hot, right? And that little thermal pad there is doing a decent job. Um, you know, it's not super cool or anything like that. So quick cut, I'm gonna test something else here. Um, I just wanna see if I can improve the thermals by having this contact this here. Uh, so as it stands right now, that will remove heat from the NVMe, but then it just kind of will circulate inside there. So I have a pad on there to basically off. But these don't touch here, you can see, you know, when that's down, there isn't any direct contact between that and this here, which I, it would be really nice if there was. So what I'm gonna do is I have this here, and hopefully I can get heat transference uh, from one to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other. Uh, so we're gonna go like that there, close that up. Okay, well, it's just gonna keep going forever. We can see here that my plan was a great success. 
Uh, temperatures are way down now, 56 degrees here. Uh, and the enclosure is warmer, which is a good thing. The back plate, I can feel the heat coming off. So it's coming from the SSD into that basically thermal solution and then into the metal here. Any of the excess is gonna come into here. And then this is a pretty big surface area. This is all metal. This is a pretty big surface area. It's actually not hot. Like you could set this on your lap, even like the sensitive areas, not gonna bother me, but it does get the heat off. And you can see here, we're way down. Like we're peaking at 56. It's been writing for a while now. Again, hundreds of gigabytes. Uh, we're gonna be writing here. I've probably written about 70 gigs so far, maybe 60. And it's, it's actually gone down. Like it's not going up. It went up to 56, it went back down to 55, whatever. So that's a really good idea. I would actually just add that extra pad there on top there just to basically build up that Z height on this here. And then you actually get connection between the SSD, a throughput connection into this here. And it does dramatically decrease the temperatures. So there you go, fantastic. Um, that actually decreased the temperatures a lot there. We're getting really good temperatures now. Uh, big surface area on this thing here and it's working great. So what do I think about the Yoda Master here? Uh, it seems to be very, very good. This fantastic for things like video editing. If you're gonna be doing video editing, these are critical. These are a critical device for Mac users. If you are a Mac user and you are watching my video, do not pay Apple a bazillion dollars for storage. That is where they get you. The devices themselves are reasonably priced. Fantastic, I love MacBooks. They're fantastic devices. And then they gouge you like crazy on storage. That's where they make their money. If you're a Windows user, you'll look at Mac user and be like, are you insane for paying that kind of money for mediocre storage? So a Mac user, buy yourself something like this. This is not an expensive device. It will cost you relatively nothing. Pick yourself up an NVMe, which also costs you relatively nothing. You can get two terabytes. You can get four terabytes of these. They will cost you a mere fraction of what you'll pay for Apple, and then what you do, you throw it in a device like this, you stick it into your MacBook or your iMac, whatever, your Apple product, and you do your video editing right off of something like this. Those Macs are equipped with Thunderbolt 4, 40 gigabit per second ports. You're paying money for the Thunderbolt 4 on your MacBook, use it. Get yourself one of these. If you have a Legion Go, like this here, or the new upcoming MSI Claw. MSI Claw, those are both USB 4 devices. This has USB 4. Look at the speeds out of something like this. I mean. For one thing, this is technically a Windows computer, so I could just use this as a Windows computer, put this onto a monitor or something like that. It actually has two ports. It has one down here. Put one of these to display out to my screen there. Use this for storage so I don't have to have a ton of storage on here. And I can use this as a, you know, a computer with very, very fast storage with a device like this. Just tuck this behind my device there and, you know, output to my monitor here and have a full Windows setup on my Legion Go here, which is incredibly compelling. Um, you know, these handhelds are great, but they don't have a lot of storage inside. Hook it up to your Legion Go, hook it up to your MSI Claw that's coming out soon, and you'll have, you know, blazing speeds for something like that, or just gaming. Uh, you're getting to the point now where, especially some of these gigantic open world games, they have long load times. It is nice to have storage like this that's very, very fast versus, you know, some basic Another win from Yoda Master. This is, I think, the third, if not the fourth, that I reviewed of theirs, different devices. Um, they haven't had a miss yet. I like it when companies make good, consistent stuff. When these guys reached out to me, immediately I said yes, because so far it's been no issues whatsoever. I've had no problems with their devices. They're very, very good. Um, and, you know, it's just a nice device overall. And this is just another fantastic device from them. USB 4 uh, enclosures like this are awesome. And they can be very, very, very expensive when you buy them. This one here is a much more reasonable price. I mean, it's not peanuts, you know, it doesn't cost nothing, but compared to some of the competitive options you can get from other big OEM brands, they're really expensive. This is very compelling. So awesome, awesome, awesome product.